I thought we would do a little bit of arithmetic together. We, we are on the verge here of hitting 1 million deaths in the United States from SARS-CoV-2 infection, COVID-19. Uh, those are directly recognized deaths where COVID-19 has most likely led to death or been verified to have led to death, and it misses a lot of death that's related to COVID-19 because individuals present with exacerbation of chronic illnesses and yet have not been identified as having had COVID-19 because they're vulnerable and caretakers have died. There's a lot going on here re regarding death and the pandemic, but but let, let's walk it back a little bit and just push the I believe button and, and think about whether there actually are only 1 million deaths from COVID-19. We're looking at these flags every day at, at half mast now. And, and so let's see what that number looks like for Nebraska. And let's think about what that number looks like also in the context of primary vaccination. And, and the spoiler that I'm going to give you now regarding these very few slides is that, that you should get primary vaccination now if you have not. We still have counties in Nebraska that have fewer than one in two individuals vaccinated. And uh, frankly, at this point, it is astonishing. And, and we'll, we'll talk about why here over the next few slides. So as always, views are my own, um, but, but really if you're not primary vaccinated for COVID-19, someone has lied to you. So what are the numbers around death in COVID-19 globally? at least 6 million people have died. Uh, globally, there's an additional issue where you have large areas of population and likely transmission and death that very little surveillance and case identification has been possible. So, so it is an astonishing number. It is a Holocaust-sized number of death from this pandemic, and, and we should recognize it as, as such. In the United States, we've had a million people die. And in Nebraska, among those recognized to have been COVID-19 linked deaths, we've had 4,234. So these numbers are all from, from Friday. That number, that 4,200 deaths is, is larger than all of Nebraskan deaths from just the Army alone. Forget about the, the Air Force. Well, it was the Army Air Corps uh, for, for, for the World War II, but forgetting about the other services, Army deaths, across Korea, Vietnam, and World War II were, were less than what Nebraska has experienced. And while it is true that that number is a little bit less than an adjusted count of deaths that we might experience if we extrapolated the US number and took it by our population, I'm gonna refer here to something that Professor Lawler said recently in the, in the Politico interview, uh, look at South Korea, so much more varied and complex place and and they have been very close to large swells or transmissions in their region with variants and, and they've had one-fifth of the number of deaths by population than, than Nebraska has experienced. Now you already know I'm going to be talking about primary vaccination and so I think it reasonable to think for a moment how, how does Nebraska do with vaccination regarding respiratory illness and, and you may or may not be surprised to learn that for seasonal influenza vaccination, this, these, this tableau of state performance and uptake of seasonal flu vaccine from 2018 and, and 19, but, but in that respect, Nebraska is characteristically above average, as it is in so many things, right? And there you see Nebraska way over to the right for seasonal flu vaccination. And, and yet, we do less well when it comes to a pandemic threat. So H1N1 pandemic vaccine, we were slightly below the US average on uptake of, of pandemic vaccine. And for COVID, we are, we are average to below average for uptake of COVID vaccination. And yet, the data now is, is overwhelming that primary vaccination matters to an astonishing degree regarding the reduction of mortality of deaths
from COVID-19, regardless of variant. And so this is a nice graphic generated by an organization called the Commonwealth Fund. And what one can see very quickly is by May 1st, at a point when vaccines were broadly available in the United States and certainly available in Nebraska, the recognition, the data was really overwhelming regarding what primary vaccination does in the reduction of mortality. I think choosing May 1 as, as a date of interest is, is generous, but, but that's what we'll do. We're, we're picking a day where data was robust, it was widespread, it was readily available, it would be understood by anyone in any sector of government and society, and the vaccine was available. So why am I harping on May 1? Well, if you look at 1 May, and you look to see, and this is a this is a modeling exercise done with arithmetic and nothing more complicated. If you choose the one May date, up to that point, Nebraska had experienced 2,200 deaths. The number of deaths after that date was just under 2,000. If we then say, well, 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 what should we expect if we're just looking at an individual? What should we expect the protection to be from primary vaccination against SARS-CoV-2? And we choose what probably was the toughest case for the vaccine, in my view, the Delta variant, because it was not only readily transmissible and distant from that original strain of SARS-CoV-2, but, but also rather severe in an individual. An individual infected with that strain was more likely to have an adverse outcome. The vaccine effectiveness against death for the vaccines available here in Nebraska was nine and 10. Now, the number I'm about to give you is a gross underestimate of the deaths from an inability by us to more fully uptake and embrace the opportunity of primary vaccination. We're not considering boosters. We're not considering the problem of negative observation bias, which is here in Nebraska, we tend not to look for COVID-19, honestly, in contrast to other jurisdictions. And if one does not look, one does not find. Looking only at direct prevention of death from the vaccine and not thinking about what happens when there's lots of vaccine uptake and transmission itself is less, and so case pressure on the vulnerable is less, without thinking about indirect disease effects, either because it's when I have my COVID-19 or my influenza that I decide to have my myocardial, infarct myocardial infarction, but it doesn't get picked up that way because I lost my caregiver to COVID-19, and so my likelihood of death increases because case burden in medical facilities caused case delay of intervention for problems that then became more severe, not accounting for any of that, how many deaths would have been prevented had we been a little bit better at uptaking primary vaccination in Nebraska? And the answer is a low ball estimate of about 1,800 deaths. Well, that is almost 1% of the population. This means that every single Nebraskan at least one of the people that they know of or knew personally who died of COVID-19 did, did not have to die. To put that number in a little bit of a different perspective, that is the same size as a Marine Corps littoral regiment. We could have invaded a coastal area with heavy equipment, with the number of people who have died needlessly because of an absence of primary vaccination in the state of Nebraska. So what should we take from this? I, I think we should take from this actually a, a moment of opportunity. We're, we're coming on a million US dead from SARS-CoV-2 infection. 
And there are one to two out of five eligible Nebraskans who have not yet received their primary vaccination. And our case rates are rising and they're rising nationally. And even if this swell does not rise in the way that Omicron and Delta had, what that means is that our opportunity as a community to experience a new variant from here or elsewhere, or one of the ones already in circulation is present and it's a real threat. And so this is a good time to think about primary vaccination and to promote it in those who have not had it.